This episode of Sessions with Steph is brought to you by our partner, Fearless Sounds. Francesca Sacerdoti, along with her amazing team, take care of every artist's needs when it comes to marketing, playlist placement, advertising, and artist management. You can follow Fearless Sounds on Instagram and Facebook, or just give them a call at 514-409-6061. Thank you, Francesca, and thank you, Fearless Sounds. And now, we present to you our latest session with Steph. All right, this is another episode of Sessions with Staff, guys. I'm starting off with a chin chin. Cheers, yeah. guys. Cheers. 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 Salute. We got the bourbon going. It's going to be a really good podcast. Now you know why I love doing this podcast. I get to drink the, <laughs> the a, bourbon with it, some buddies. It's a night out. Yeah, <laughs> it's, a, it's, a night out. <laughs> it's a night out. Guys, I'm so excited tonight. I have some really great guests, uh, friends guys i've known for many many years and uh, great guys great musicians i'm excited to do this podcast um also before i start i'm gonna say check out my sister podcast which is let's talk it out and they just finished uh it, actually they interviewed m who's actually here in the background and this is his art lab guys look look at all the artwork here M wonderful does amazing stuff what he a lets spot us, what a spot he lets us use his place i mean he's the best and uh, we get coffees from uh, cremery amore rose rose amore it's the same thing what's the amore <laughs> part what's the amore part cream coffee and love cream coffee and love that's yeah. it that's it guys amazing place check it out there's saint lawrence and gunod right right at the corner um, again, we're broadcasting from M's Emerge Lab. Fuck, I love saying that. Um, so yeah, check it out. Subscribe to Sessions with Steph. Subscribe to Let's Talk It Out. It's a blast. I interview musicians. I speak to them. Interview. What the fuck do I interview? We have a talk. We have a discussion. We laugh. And we, we drink bourbon. Yeah, we drink bourbon. We're gonna drink that bottle. Is gonna go down. By the way, thanks for bringing it. This is amazing. Great. Awesome. Fantastic. <laughs> That's what we do. Um, so before we start, I mean, I have to get rid of the sponsors because without them, the show doesn't go on. We love our sponsors. Thank you so much, guys, for doing this, for sponsoring the show. It really helps us if we can have more sponsors. All the best. You guys, anyone you know, send them to us. We need well, sponsors. It's I'll make, great. I'll make some calls. <laughs> You'll make some calls. So um, our, now we have a new one, but I'm going to start with the regular. We have Nettoyage DMA, Mr. Anthony Paterno, guys. The cleaning company does, they do it all, residential, uh, they do a commercial. Uh, if you do a renovation, they're going to come there and clean it up. Uh, they do everything. Uh, they work really well. I call Anthony. He's so sweet. He's super nice. Uh, his team or him, whoever comes, they do a great job. Squeaky clean. Call Nettoyage DMA. You can find them on their website, which is nettoyagedma.com. You can call Anthony Paterno. I am going to find the number. I don't know the number. Lisa, it's who's... At it's, at it's at the top. top. Where's the number? There it is. You see, the fucking bourbon's getting to me. So, <laughs> so nettoyage the admin. Anthony, call Anthony at 514-686-1581. Once again, it's nettoyage DMA. They're fantastic. You can also follow them on Facebook and I believe Instagram. Our newest sponsor amazing thank you so much they are real estate agents this is l'equipe miguel and cynthia guys fantastic for all your all your needs l'equipe miguel and cynthia from the remax uh like i don't know the way it works but they have a remax um, they're actually an equipe so it's l'equipe miguel and cynthia de remax and they have a slogan oh, which on. is l'expertise yeah. immobilière authentique et humaine <laughs> And uh, they work uh, toute la région du Grand Montréal. That uh -huh. means all the all large, Montreal. greater Montreal area. They, well, by the way, their logo is amazing. I'm going to be putting it on the screen. They're really, uh, they're really nice people. I, I haven't bought a house with them. I will if if I have money <laughs> one day. But whatever. Uh, <laughs> you have to buy a house. That's, whatever. And that's why you need sponsors. <laughs> that's why I need sponsors. Come on, I got to buy another property. Uh, Le Cap Miguel and Cynthia, thank you so much. Merci beaucoup. Uh, go see them for their, your real estate needs. They are amazing. Amazing, super friendly, super nice people. Check them out. 514-641-6836. That's right. And if they have a website, I will be posting it right now. If they don't, well, I won't be posting <laughs> it. <laughs> Once again, 514-641-6836. Thank you very much. And now, throw this out. <laughs> and we have another drink. Another drink. Another. We finished, guys. Shit. Awesome water. Uh, rookie. 
All right, guys. So let me introduce my guests. This is really an amazing story. They've been doing it for years. A long time. Um, and they started off with a band. They're going to give the whole story. But they're back at it, is what I'm saying. They were kind of... The band itself was dormant. They were all playing, I would imagine, uh, separate, like at home individually. Yeah, we never stopped. You never, we never stopped. stopped. We never stopped. But the band itself is back together. Yeah. A little different, but it's back together. It sounds amazing. You're going to get to hear them play. Welcome to the show, Franco, Ray. Thank you so Thank much. You. Thank Thanks you, for Steph. coming Thanks on. Thanks for having Thank you, Steph. The band is now called The Skirts. And we're going to hear a story from the skirts. Guys, yeah. once again, thank you for coming on. No, thanks we for having us. We are going to have fun here. So, you know, I got to say, I'm going to say this. Yes. I've watched every episode you've made. Every yes. single one. I don't miss them. And I watch them on Wednesday nights. So I watch them when they're fresh, you, man. You post you? them. Yeah. Yeah. Because I'm a fan. And I'm a fan of Stefano. And I'm a fan of, like, I support <laughs> what happens in this city. My heart. It's, yeah. It's, no, I feel a hand on your leg. Bro. Listen, the, the I brought on the couch on purpose. Listen, you know, it, 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 I, I grew up in the city. I know Stefano somewhat. We've done a couple of gigs together we have, in yeah. the last few years. I know his brother a little well, better. Well, the last few years, we've known each other more. We've gone like, to know we, each other yeah, better. Yeah. But, but a lot of the guests that you've had on are people that I've either known very well or, or heard a little bit about. So uh -huh. you've always brought guests that, like, that, that I'm like, oh, this is cool. I get to spend like an hour with Stefano and such and such. It, it's and, and I think what you're doing is cool because you're like, you know, I'm a musician and you're, you're catering primarily to musicians and, and this local music scene. And, yeah, yeah. And I, like, like I said, like I'm not, like no word of a lie, every Wednesday you come on, whether I know them or not, and usually I do, I'll watch it and I sit and I'll spend like the, the whole full hour oh, taking it in because it's cool. I think, which, and I kept telling to Stefano, I kept telling him, Ray and I are working on the project. Yeah. You know, when the time is right, let us come on and tell so our story. I'm so, so excited. So this it's is amazing. the story. This is the night. Yeah. It's and and yeah. you know what I love about this show? Some, like, like I've known Franco for years. Ray, we, we've known each other for many, many years. I've known you. It's crazy, eh? You were a little boy. You were maybe <laughs> two, three years old. Mind you, I was, I was your brother. 20 years friend. ago then. We're, lo what? We're, yeah, looking at, we're looking at 40 something years now. Yeah. Amazing. And yeah, yeah. <laughs> She's laughing. Wow. I remember he was, he hardly was, he was hardly walking. And uh, I was, He's I was your. <laughs> he stumbles a bit. He, yeah. <laughs> he crawls. So he I was, crawls. I was, I was very good friends with your brother. We used to roller skate back, <laughs> back in roller skating back in the mid '70s. So we're looking at '76, '77. <laughs> wow! Yeah, that long ago. Holy and you were God. a little baby. You were, you were. Uh, yeah, I remember your parents. I remember something? where you lived. Um, Did you take I, lessons from my dad? No. No, because I was scared of your dad. Uh, that's right. That's I, I heard. I heard I've stories heard, about I've your heard, dad. I heard those things. <laughs> very strict. He I've was a very good stories. teacher, but he was strict. He was strict. And back then, back in the '70s, not physically, was, well, mid. For well, me. mid mid to late seventies. Yeah. Back then, it was kind of normal to you know everybody would slap their kids around, right? Yeah. Now forget it. You yeah, can't do that. Uh, but no, he, uh, never, he never slapped. That no, 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 no. But he, he was very strict. He had the stick. He had the stick. And he got and angry. He, yeah, exactly. He got angry. Yeah. So, but I wasn't a musician back then. I, I only started. I was um, what fourteen. We, well, you're, you're, you're and you're a bassist now, so you're still not. Oh uh, come on. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, so I, 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 I was, we go way back. Wow. That's, yeah. that's see, I, I mean, the face, I was like, yes, okay. We're looking at maybe what, 40, when, when, 45 years. When these guys met, yeah. when you guys met in the parking lot, yeah. that was a moment, man. Did you see my You guys, rec like, oh, you guys recognized oh, each other God. and it was like this nice. How crazy this is thing, that? thing, like you just, you locked in like, oh, I know you. Yeah. How crazy is and that? And he told me, so that I, I remember him. But kind of. As a was, yeah. practically a baby. That's kind of cool. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Kind of this cool. is why I love this show. So many things come out of this show. Yeah. And also the different people I have. Like last week, you didn't see it because it just came out tonight. <laughs> no, I haven't <laughs> seen it yet. Tonight. I'm going to go home tonight and watch it. <laughs> but Aldo, Aldo <laughs> Valadi was on. Oh, Aldo. Oh, Aldo. Right? Yeah, so of course. He played with us. He, he was. We'll get to that. that yeah. That, yeah. That's this a chapter in our story. Yeah, yeah, we'll get to that. Okay. All right. That's wow. He was our Pavarotti, but we'll we'll get to that. And that's a cool we'll story. Explain. We'll yeah, explain how that. How yeah. that so, that. and the, yeah. the week before, I had a guitarist, like just, and I love it. Yeah. Now I have guys that have been. Yeah, she was great. Forever. I saw that too. It was pretty good, I eh? Watch, pretty cool. I watch that all. Um, so, and I'm excited to have you guys on. Yeah, this is thanks. Great. Thanks for doing this, man. Thank you. Um, okay, awesome. So let's yeah. start with with the story of the skirt. The origin story. The origin. Well, hold story. on. It, it, it wasn't the skirts. It was the yeah. outskirts. Yeah, yeah, that's right. That's right. So, but let's go beyond that. Oh, yeah. Just to say, Ray and I met in high school. And there's a couple other guys, one of which is still our drummer, it's Rob Bonds, and he lives down in Florida. And right now, as we, as we tape this uh, a podcast, 
there's a hurricane, Ian, that's hitting Tampa where he lives. So prayers and, and, and good thoughts and, yeah. good, and goodwill. Like he's, he's in the eye of the hurricane right now. Oh, so obviously that you know, lends some challenges to being in a band with somebody that lives in another country. Uh-huh. But we, um, we make it work. We, we make, make it work. It. But, but the three of us started a long time ago uh, with another buddy of ours, Fred. And you know, that factors into the story too. Okay. But we started, we were just four dudes in the East End playing rock and roll, playing, playing music in, in, uh, in, in our parents' garages, basically. And uh, what happened is like that band vamped into the outskirts. And the outskirts was when the four of us, uh, the three of us, I should say, with uh, Fred, met up with Emil. This the art is here, Emil, yeah. Dude. So, so that, that was the, the, the birth was, of the what, outskirts. 88? 88, 88 80s, yeah. 89, late 80s. 80s. And... Uh, if I may, like, I, there's, there's so many stories in my head know, right now. I love it. But I want to say, like, we were, like, at, at the beginning of, of when Ray and I met, we were, like, little heavy metal kids listening yeah. to Motley Crue. 14-year-old kids that were listening yeah. to Maiden, Motley Crue, and Ozzy, you know, that Aussie, stuff. Yeah. That, you, know, yeah. that, you know, 84, 85. Uh-huh. And, uh, yeah. It so, was very, so then when, 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 a, when M the actually came, came with us and, and, and we, we formed the outskirts, he kind of helped us um, uh, explore. Yeah. New new genre of music, yeah, which was kind of country rock back then. Um, um, John Mellencamp roots was rock, yeah. So what happened uh, is Eagles. like we we were like you know typical rocker eighty eighties guys playing in their garage, and but at the same time while listening to all this metal music and you know le- trying to learn how to tap and all that, yeah, like we were you know typical garage rock. Um, I also ha- I have an older brother, so for every Motley Crue and Iron Maiden record I had, he had a Bruce Springsteen and John Mellencamp record. So in my house, I would play my stuff, but he would play his records. And whenever I, and I remember hearing the Lonesome Jubilee, Mellencamp record, mm-hmm. I heard fiddles, I heard pedal steel, I heard accordion, oh, I heard okay. shit that I'd never heard before in my life, and it yeah. blew my mind. And I remember, I don't know if you remember this, I've never actually had this conversation with you. I ran over to your house, I had a little acoustic guitar, I think it was a Kramer or something. I ran over to your house and I said, dude, and I was playing these, these chords, I'm like, it's like everything changed. Like I discovered country rock, I discovered uh, roots rock, and my life was changed. Wow. So I knew that whatever we were doing wasn't going to cut it anymore. We needed to change. And around that time, we, met into, we ran into Emil. Nice. I, I, I admired him from afar. He was in another band, <laughs> a little older than us because he's an older guy. Yeah, we all know that. So, you know, we, we admired him from afar. <laughs> like, man, how cool would it be to have him be our singer? <coughs> wow. So we kind of, like, harvested this, this, this idea. And uh, long story short, we met up with Em, came into our band. We, we picked up another guitar player along the way named Enzo. Who's still around today, Angelo Trimboli, and we formed the outskirts. Wow, okay. And we were uh, in, in an era where a lot of our contemporaries and our friends were playing hard rock and like bar rock. Totally we were we were doing roots rock, we were doing Americana, we were doing country rock. We were we were doing what we were like the outcasts. We were the, yeah, we were yeah, just doing we something different. But we were it was the only so ones true playing, to us. playing, you know, we, we had man, from mandolin on stage, yeah, we had yeah. acoustic guitars wow. on stage. I remember our first recording session and the guy was sitting there saying, I'm still trying to figure out how five Italian dudes <laughs> I'm still trying are, to are writing country rock songs. Like, well, that's 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 who we are. But that's wow. what it was. It was M's voice and our guitars and our harmonies. Ray and I were always big and like, while we liked Motley Crue, we then discovered the Eagles and, and Tom Petty and Springsteen, and so we started Leonard Skinner, 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 and we, we started like you know in harmonies and all that. So our our sound changed somewhat, and uh, yeah, so that was the birth of the Outskirts. Like, wow. like that we're. Late 80s, early 90s, we were... No, no, late, late 80s, 88, yeah. 87, 88, when, 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 M, when we got together with M and we started writing songs yeah. and we started, we started realizing we're... I'm not going to say we're naturals at this, but this is what we were it's, meant to do. Yeah. You know, this is the... It's your comfort style. zone. It's your... Yeah. It's yeah. Your, your it alley. just it came it right. so naturally. It wow. felt right. So it was, okay. it, it was a lot of fun to, to play. Let me, uh, and was fantastic as a as a frontman. Let me, and, let me uh, stop you for yeah. a second. Yeah. I mean, because right now people are already curious. How about we do a tune? Let's do a song. Yeah. Okay. okay? Let's just to see, and then you'll, we'll get the story of how the skirts came to be and how this okay. reincarnation I, came to be. Right? I, I, I'd love to tell you more about that. That's yeah. gonna be awesome. So let's let's get. Is this a song that's gonna be on your? So so so, I'll, I'll tell you, you know how we all came to record right now. A few days ago, I, I realized that I had tendonitis. Uh-huh. I thought it could be worse, but my arm was in bad shape. 
and I couldn't play any guitar like Ooh. a couple of days ago. So I enlisted a really good friend of mine, a colleague of mine. We work at a guitar company together, uh -huh. Mario Buffarelli, who we've had on the show. Yeah, with I had Mimo. him on the show with me. And yeah. Mario's going to join us and play a couple of songs. He's going to he's, he's going to rip a little bit and uh, and amazing. make the sound that much better. So so guys, you're going to hear is... one more one more guy. So right, what song are you performing? We're going to do Half Alive, which is our new single. Half, all right, guys, this is Half Alive with Mario, special guest star Mario Buffarelli on guitar, helping out the skirts. Lately feeling half alive Get into my car and drive Feel like letting go Try not to let it show fucking amazing awesome. thank you that was amazing thank holy you. shit yeah, i love you. the sound i see the roots i hear the roots it, it's a return to what we did like we, we were talking just earlier about um our, our our origins were as a roots rock band it's what we love uh -huh. it's what's in our heart since and, and we'll continue the story but i mean we we've gone a lot of different directions and to this day like my my record collection is very uh, uh, expansive and i listen to a lot of different sounds as, yeah, as, as we all do but I think when we get together Ray, myself and Bonds we still play roots rock like Love we it. still play like we like vocal music we like country rock we like a lot of acoustic guitar and having Mario join us for a yeah, little bit is uh, it adds another thank flavor you, Mario. so that yeah, was yeah Mario, thank you Mario's yeah. cool where is he so, um, is. I think we have another song after right yeah, we'll, 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 we'll do one more yeah. you can, and Mario's gonna sit in as well he's right? gonna yeah, sit in as well yeah. I love it yeah. so, cool. okay yeah. so, so was this a COVID thing 
putting back uh, the skirts together or no actually he's been uh, busting ass photos, yeah. for many many years <laughs> It's like Ray. I got a lot of songs on my phone. I'm, I'm, I'm writing, and you know we got to get together. We got to put them together, and um, I'm like, yeah, yeah, whatever. But uh, it's, there's always something better to do, yeah. you know, or, or not, not necessarily better, but more important life things gets, to do. Life, life gets, gets in the way. Gets in the way. You know, you got way. shit to do at home, and you know you got work, and you're tired, and and the weekends you want to relax and yeah. whatever. And then about a year ago, we, I, I said, you know what, let's. Let's do let's, it. Let's do it. Let's take it seriously. Uh, I bought some recording equipment yeah. in my basement, and I said, "You know what? We're gonna do this." Amazing. He he, um, he started sending me just you know just demos. record yeah just demos not recordings even sketches I call them I, I don't even call yeah them demos, re- I call you know sketches. just just demos of, of of what he was writing and he actually like had full songs usually. <laughs> but you're gonna see actually had good songs. No no <laughs> For once. no the songs are amazing <laughs> and and they like I have a problem with listening to new music and, and, and something that I've never heard before, it doesn't, it doesn't, get, it doesn't catch me. It takes me. time. Yeah, it takes time. This guy sends me stuff, and it just vocals and, and an acoustic guitar. It's like, I, I see it. I know what it's going to wow. sound like. And you it's know? really nice for the ego. When you send somebody something, and within three minutes, they write back, wow. Well, that's because they didn't like it. That's amazing. <laughs> no, but you it's know. It's like four and a half minutes. I don't know how that happened. Wait, hold on. <laughs> no, but you know, like to have an instant Before. reaction. No, but it, you it, know when it, a song it, just like, gets okay, to you, like he, he gets and you it. hear that. Like I heard it for the first time. Well, no, actually, that's not true because I saw the video. And the yeah. video was yeah. There's a video out on YouTube. Actually, so too. I heard, yeah, I heard the uh, the uh, full version of it because mm-hmm. this was like kind of an acoustic version. Yeah. Of it. Yeah. Um, but but, yes, but what he that. sends me doesn't sound like that. Yeah. But but it still got me, and I'm like, this we're we're gonna do this. So so there's a bit of a process, if I may. And, and again, like like Ray's right. I've I've been right. I never stopped writing. Like we had an uh, uh, an original band that morphed into post uh, our country rock years. We morphed into a grunge band, and we had a lot of success 90s. in the nineties. And I'd like to touch on that too because we it was a different band, but we uh, we had some radio success and we got an airplane. And we played the Pearl Jam and we did some really cool we things in the nineties. Yeah, oh, we, we did. Need, we, need we, did we did a lot of cool shit. Um, and then many years later, but I never stopped playing, like all the years. And then when Emma and I came back together to do the, uh, the restaurants and, and the cover gigs, that was another extension of, of my musical life. But I never stopped being a writer. Like I, I'm, I identify with songwriters. Like to me, Bob Dylan, Neil Young, Springsteen, these are, these are my guys, you know. Uh, so I always wanted to do that. But it never really happened until, like, you know, you mentioned COVID. Like, I, like I, I, I've been sending Ray and the guys I, songs, but... During COVID is where I really had time to say, let's do something. Like, everybody's doing something. Why not us? Yeah. And uh, like I said, our drummer lives in the States. I had sent him a demo. He sent me back a video of him playing drums to my little shitty demo, an acoustic guitar in my voice. And it, it and was magic. Just, just, it just playing so the drums. Really? That he's a heavy hitting. He's, he's a John Bonham type. Love I'll feel. Like, it's yeah. just, like, it's just, great, it's just honestly. big. And he played the drums to my little crappy demo. And I, and I looked at that, I'm like, shit, Rib, we got to do something. And then as it happened, he was here for holidays. He had a very limited amount of time. He was visiting his parents. He says, I'm not here in town for a lot of days. I'm like, forget getting ready for dinner, like getting together for dinner. Let's record. So we had one day together. <laughs> we recorded. Yeah, don't parents. worry. Christmas Eve, don't Christ, worry. Christmas will come again. But we <laughs> recorded our song. Important. And uh, that was the impetus for us to really get going. Like, like Ray had, you know, we had started doing something, but I think we needed our drummer to anchor us and give us that. I always said, a good band begins and ends with a drummer. Just saying. A bad drummer will kill a band. <laughs> like a good drummer will make a band. <laughs> Look at that smile. No, but it is true. A bad drummer will kill a band. <laughs> will kill a band. I, I, and a good yeah. drummer will elevate a band. I, yeah. So, 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 you know, I like to think that our drummer elevates us significantly. Sounds but, great. But having him play on, our, 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 on this song uh, was all the reason we needed to just finally get it done. Wow. And, and we did, yeah. So, uh, and we haven't stopped happy. since. So we got, yeah. we got a whole bunch of songs that yeah. are... You know, kind of recorded but not recorded. They're done but they're not done. You know, so. So you're gonna. But get, but this is the only it? one. Yeah, Half Alive is is the one that w- was actually recorded and mastered and uh, mixed mastered and and has a video. Well, the video. I love it. It's I a love fun. It. It's a fun I little video. So we you know? re- we recorded it here locally at Base Bin Studios uh-huh. with Albert Chambers. Yeah. Oh, wow. Albert yeah. is just a genius. He's the, man, yeah. He's the greatest he guy. Made it sound he's fantastic. Just, he's yeah. just so really zen good. and cool. And uh, it was COVID and it was a little difficult because it was a curfew. And, and although I have a lot of friends with studios, home studios, a little difficult with the whole masking thing. So we decided let's just go to a conventional studio. Albert was very cool. He's got a great room and he's got a great ear and he, and he was just a delight to work with. And um, 
Yeah, we'll go back there again if we can, I think. And, yeah, uh, of and, course. Uh, so you guys are just going to like release singles? You know what? You didn't even know. Right now? No, no. There, know. There, there's, there's no plan. plan. There's no, no plan. plan. There's so many songs that this guy's sending me. <laughs> and I'm like, okay, let's... Can we... Okay, there's stop. because no I can't keep up. Just stop. <laughs> Just stop. You know let's what start... It's one a, by one. It's a sausage factory. I'm I'm good. I'm good at I'm good at <laughs> I'm, I'm good at creating. Songs. Yeah, this this looks I'm, like a sausage factory. I'm I'm good. Yeah, this is like like this couch right now. <laughs> I'm gonna have a drink. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So I I can write a song. I can sit and I have enough attention to write. I got a I got a, a knack for melody and chords, <laughs> and I can write them down. But then my attention wanes. Like I want to move on to the next thing, and that's always been my problem. So what happens is. In Ray, who I've known, like we're, we're in our 50s, I've known him like maybe 40 years and more. In Ray, I have a perfect partner that I can ship him an idea and I could move on. Because then Ray will take it and say, I've got your idea, now I will add bass and percussion and I'll arrange it, your course is along, let's do something at the end. And he'll, so, you know, I'll start the song, he'll arrange it, oh, he'll finish it. And then we have, you know, again, look, we're working with some music, our, 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 our partner who's down in the States. But it works well because it's like a little assembly line. So I'll pass it on to him, and then it's in good hands. And he knows where I want to go with it. And, and we've never really had an issue where... Well, like we've been playing together for, for, for about time. 40 years, yeah. 38 years, let's say. Yeah. So we were 14. Yeah. And uh, so yeah. I, I know what he likes. I know what he doesn't like. I know he knows what I like, what I don't like. So he's not gonna he's not gonna say, well, I want it this way, whether you like it or not. He yeah. knows that I'm gonna I'm gonna make it mine, even though it's kind of his. You know, so so yeah. we collaborate well together. Well, you trust each other, right? Yeah. Absolutely, that's, absolutely. And you have to because and, and that's what. But you know, magic. you know what's funny is that we we went from 1988 to 2021, yeah. uh, 22. Yeah. So uh, there's a lot in between. In, in between, <laughs> so we were talking about the uh, the M years of the outskirts. Yeah. We were a roots rock, country rock band. The band was called Outskirts. I remember sitting. M used to have a very small version of this. Was a room in his apartment on Vio Street. Uh-huh. With the Met chili? Him. Yeah, with the chili parties. But Emmy used to have this little room that he had in his apartment. He was 20 and I was 18. And we'd get together in little, his little art room. And we would write songs facing each other. It was a very Lennon McCartney type thing. Okay. We'd face each other. Emmy would have a guitar. Whatever chords he knew, that he'd play. And I'd play. We'd write our first songs together. And that was the birth of the Oscars. And we wrote a lot of our early songs. Oh, to Billy Behind the Truth. And all, all this cool stuff that way. And... Um, uh, that that sound kind of you know there was a like I said I was at the Mellon Camp I was at the Springsteen and then Emmett said you know Blue Rodeo has now called Outskirts I'm like fuck it's a cool name and he's like we should call our band Outskirts and and that was the and origin of the band yeah Outskirts wow. just that when we got back together we thought Outskirts now has gone through so many different members and different faces and different feels that we should just it's a relaunch we're middle aged men let's let's yeah. Let's call it the skirts and, 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 and just move on. Yeah, we, we cut the out. Yeah. And we put an apostrophe. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So. there you go. That's a change. But uh, the M years came to an end, but basically I think, you know, we, we, it outran its course. M had other projects in mind. He had things he needed to do, and he left the band. And we found another singer. Asshole. <laughs> No, you no, know, because so we, we came back together. Well, maybe back then, yeah, he was. Yeah, 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 yeah. It was but you know what happens you broke the when, heart. when you're in your early 20s and you're, and you're trying to, uh, like when you're a younger, a younger man that cares so much about his art, like it's, it's yeah. everything to you. It, it's it's yeah. before, before family, before school, before women, before relationships is your band. Your band is your gang. It's your, it's your brotherhood. It's your, life, it's, it's your lifeline. Um, and leaving the band crushed us. We were, yeah. just, we were lost. We, really we, were, we lost our singer. We lost our front man. But, you know, we're, we're going to move on. And I remember him thinking, what do we do now? I said, we just go on. We just go on. And we found another singer who was super talented, a great writer. Different. Different, Different though. And he came yeah. in. He heard all our songs. He said, yeah, that's cool. I'm not going to sing this. Though. I can't sing that. I can't. Ooh. He, couldn't, is, he couldn't sing. Yeah. And this was, we're, we're looking at early 90s, early 91, 90s. 92. 92. Yeah. Yeah, and um, music was changing. Music was changing. Grunge was, get, well, 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 you know, it, Pearl it, Jam, and, Smashing Pumpkins on the radio. They were Nirvana. they were coming out, and so we kind of we adopted. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, we, we we adopted that sound. Yeah. And because the singer was a natural at that, and he couldn't sing the songs that we were singing with well, when he, M was he, in the band. He didn't want to. No, it wasn't his style. It wasn't his, thing, it wasn't yeah. his style, and, and he's not going to pretend. And yeah. and it, they were in his songs, and you know, but. Um, yeah, so early '90s. Then we kind of changed sound. Yeah, which was we, cool. We, we, cool. We kept yeah. the name. We changed the band. Okay. So we just by, yeah. and and sometimes by changing the lead voice, and, and and the front person, 
it, it, oh, yeah. it's, it's like it's like Van Halen did Van Halen, it. And Black yeah. Sabbath did it. And, and you know what's crazy? And, I love Van know. Halen. I love uh, I love Gary both Tron. versions. Gary Tron is uh, which was a singer you of Extreme. What? I'm a big First, Extreme fan. That's an underrated version of Van Halen. Right. That it's one just, record. It's amazing. It's, Nobody it gives it credit. It is amazing because as musicians, they're great. It's Van yeah, Halen. Yeah, as, he's a great singer. He I really mean, is. I, I followed him for years before because yeah. Extreme was one it's of the It's funny you should mention that. That's and, but yet it just didn't hit because it's mm-hmm. not, I don't know, he doesn't bring that Van Halen sound. Like, yeah. Was right? So, uh, right. Uh, what's I know. his name? Uh, the other guy. Sammy Hager. Sammy Hager. I mean, yeah. I saw Van Halen, but Sammy Hager. I, I, I like the Hager version. Like more than the Roth, but that's yeah. just my. Opinion. Me too. I, I, I love them both. So, but but we, we kind of had, had the same. Both. same cool. We had the same situation though. We had outskirts M, outskirts Lawrence, and outskirts Lawrence was different. And then we played different. We dressed different. Yeah. We had different gear. I, I I was using delay pedals. I was using a lot of stuff. Like be back in the early days, I was an acoustic telly, like straight country rock. I played mandolin for Christ's sakes. Oh, sure. And the new band, I was using delay and wah. So it was. Yeah. Like we, we changed, but but music was changing. Like we yeah. were we were listening to what was on the radio, and we thought, yeah, we can do this, and yeah. and it was we were pretty good. But at we it. also we also started enjoying that music too. I yeah. mean, we were from we went from mid '80s from Motley Crue and Maiden and Rat and Ozzy, and then early '90s when you know uh, Soundgarden and, and Nirvana started yeah. coming out. It was like wow, and we were in, in our early '20s, so we were still. Impressionable. So, so, yeah. so whatever whatever was coming out, it's like wow, that's this is amazing. Give me more, give me more. Yeah. yeah. So so that's what we started playing. So f- throughout the nineties, we were uh, kind of we considered ourselves kind of grunge. Grunge. We <laughs> uh, yeah. So the yeah. uh, spring ninety three. So Shom FM yeah. radio. They used to have this local contest, which was great because they gave a lot of attention to local bands. It was called Les Spree. Oh, yeah, I remember that. And uh, local bands would submit their, their cassettes, two songs, and blah, blah, blah. Yeah, it was a big thing. And yeah, we, really we had just gotten a new singer. And we're like, we should enter this contest. But we hadn't really. So I remember sitting down with him, and he shows up with a. And he was like very quiet, reserved individual. Shows up with a pal of lyrics, says, well, grab one. So I grabbed one randomly. And I threw some chords on it. Uh-huh. We worked out a song, brought it to the boys. The song was called Green Parade. Entered in the contest. Lo and behold, top 12. Lo and behold, number one, we win the contest. Wow. Cool. This is cool. Our new band, Easy. Outskirts, yeah. now different sound, different... You're welcome. Everything. <laughs> <laughs> we have this song that's being played like... All hours of the day. Yeah, on, we were on, on the, the top ten at ten cool. for like ten weeks wow. or eleven wow. weeks. It was yeah. fun. Awesome. And then through that, we ended up playing in the competition in Winnipeg. With Pearl Jam, which what? No, wait, hold on. Before yeah. that, it was um, the Eastern Canadian yeah. uh, Finals, yeah, which we was, won that. Uh, so there were bands that that had similar competitions. Uh, one from Halifax, one from um, I don't know, I don't remember, but yeah, but yeah, Eastern, yeah. Canada, yeah. Eastern Canada, which we won that one, uh-huh. and then went to the National Finals, which was in Winnipeg, and it was a uh, it was a three day. Uh, festival called Sunfest, like like a Woodstock and, type deal. Yeah, and everybody was there from Blue Rodeo back in the '90s. You know, Blue yeah. Rodeo, Seth Jordan, uh, and ba- West. Backman Turner over yeah, yeah. or or Randy Backman actually. Yeah, yeah. Um, and Pearl Jam was was headliner. Uh, headliner on Sunday. We played Sunday early evening or late afternoon. A couple hours before. Though. Technically, we opened up for. Technically, yes. Yeah. 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 But yeah. we, 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 go we played the same. We played the we same stage. We were on that stage. Eddie Vedder was there two hours later. Well, yeah. And we were backstage. We were watching them that's as they were playing. That's all you need to know. Yeah. So we, we say we opened up for, uh, for Pearl Jam. But whatever. There were other bands. Sweet. Um, we didn't win that, that the, yeah. the, the, the national finals. We came, came, in second, came in second. Which wow. was fine. Whatever. But just the whole experience was fantastic. Yeah. There was like 300,000 people or something. It was crazy. And, and, you, and you know what? I have to say. Like coming out of like having your lead singer and he's here in the room. Having him quit your band and break your heart, <laughs> it's like being dumped. Like your heart is broken. And then you find this new singer and you're like, I hope it works. And then to go on to all the success was yeah. kind of cool. It was cool. We had songs on the radio. It was cool. we, 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 we had a video on Music Plus. We, you know, we had the whole wow. thing going. But again, like every other indie band, and this, I'm going to say something because I think your, your, your demographics will understand. We were guys from the East End. Yeah. You know, we always had a foot in school or a job we never put it all on the line we never quit our jobs quit our lives and went out we always made sure we were working or we're studying our our our, our we had changed drummer at that time our drummer was a, a nursing student our lead singer was a law student ray and i always worked full time we had started families at one point yeah. so so it was never like it was like we'll do music but we're going to keep our lives so like on sunday we're still the expected Italian to fun. be at our mother's house yeah. wow. having having sunday lunch and me? Of so 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 we always thought we'll do it as far as we can, but we're not gonna 
get that extra, uh, uh, you know, yeah, go that extra distance. That extra. And, uh, and I think, you know, in retrospect, looking back, that might have hurt us. You know, well, we, didn't we, hurt us. We didn't, we didn't, we never what, went on the road. Never, never, the reason right. why we, had we, a, we didn't continue or, or we didn't surpass that certain, that plateau that, that we reached was life you know we we you know we we make decisions it's a hard we start decision families we we you know uh like you said so one of us went to law school and 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 became a lawyer another one had a bachelor's in, uh, in nursing but we always continued playing and whatever yeah. we yeah. always worked and whatever so you know stuff well, that's happens the thing about music is you can stuff. always do music yeah. you yeah. can always do music yeah yeah at a certain point, and it's not for everybody. I did it full time because yeah. at that point in my life, I, I did about Grable. twenty years that all I did was music. I was fortunate to that's great, to that's great. Do it and be able to do yeah. only that. We weren't able to do it full time. I mean, we were I'm, weekend, weekend everyone gigs. Everyone can. Everyone can. Well, I think well, I think Ray, we were unwilling. Yeah, maybe. D- yeah. There was, there was but a, just ask me now with my kids. Lives. With my kids now, go back into it. I would say, e, right? Yeah. House, yeah. Another, yeah. Uh, well, we you know, uh, we had the opportunity. You know, I mean, we were yeah. opening up for 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 you yeah, know, tea party. It's, it's cross your fingers. Absolutely, yeah. and and we had the chance, and and we it's, we did some stuff that you know, and then we got screwed uh, by a management company or two course. management companies screwed us, and and then we had to pay back, and then the only way to pay back was to gig and make money. So what we decided to do is we formed. So so okay, so he's gonna so. Continue. All right. so when we got our second singer, Lawrence, we had all the success. We would send in, back in the day, you'd make a demo tape. You'd make a, a bio and a press, press kit. kit. Yeah. You send it into Sony Toronto and all that yeah. shit, whatever. Um, every, every single freaking letter came back saying, you guys sound like you too. <laughs> no, you guys are good, but good, you sound like but, you too. Yeah. But your singer sounds singer like, like we had okay. So we were a heavy band. Like we were like, a, like imagine Smashing Pumpkins meets U2. Like that's what we sounded like. Right. We had heavy, big guitar rock, big, big, you know. Big, big, big crashing drums. music, but we had a Bono type singer, which was, you know, that was just, it was just a natural tone of his voice. So at one point, it just kind of like the band morphed into being a YouTube tribute band. So we were Zoo TV. Well, we kind of, we kind of needed that band because we had bills to pay. Yeah. yeah. I mean, we had, sure. we yeah. had management companies that, that kind of screwed us. Yeah. So we said, you know, we got to pay them back. Let's form, um, you know, you, you sound like, you sound like Bono. We can easily play. U2 songs. Sure. Yeah, and tribute bands back then in the 90s were making good money. So, we're so, making good money right so now. So we were... They still are. Yeah. Oh, they still are. Okay, money. I don't know. I, don't, I know what's going on now yeah. with, oh, with tribute shit, bands. They're making, they're, they're but we were making lot. good... Mo- well, they were making good money as a yeah. tribute band. So we said, you know what? Let's let's form a tribute band to U2. Yes. Let's pay off and our debt. not many, right? No. No, well, I don't know. I, I, so, I, I don't so, know what's going on now, like yeah. I said. But back then, we said, you know, he sounds like Bono. Yeah. We sound like U2. Let's just do it, you know? Wow. And we had... Fantastic time. That, that went so on for we, almost yeah. two decades. Like, yeah. Like, oh, wow. Almost like we did 20 years. Yeah. yeah, we did it for almost So we paid our debt. Yeah. <laughs> and, and then some, you know, like, like wow. we did okay. And that exposed We played to really our... great places, like great we, venues. Yeah. And, uh, you know, the, the pay was good, obviously. Yeah. But we had such a great time because we were playing, even though we were, we were a tribute, we were still having fun and we were still playing music and we were still on stage. A, a gig we were is a playing gig. great venues. Right. A gig. Do a gig. And, a gig. And the crowd yeah. is cheering. Yeah. Fuck. Yeah. yeah. And but they we, loved but we, us. we you know a tribute band, so we had the costumes. Amazing. You know, like now I have a beard. Back then I had a goatee yeah. and a little toque that my mom had made. And I had Edge. the Edge, my, my, my mom yeah, made yeah. my mom made our costumes and we had like you know, we, we had the props and we were we were the YouTube band for Quebec and, and, and we gigged a lot and, and this is again, this is when Ray and I particularly started families, children. Yeah. But as you know, yeah. going on the road on the weekends and, and you know and making money and playing and having fun and coming back on Monday you're back at the office and so so it was that <laughs> juxtaposition of, yeah. of, of of like we're musicians we're yeah, weekend that's my lawyers. Life now what the fuck? <laughs> that's a, yeah that's exactly. But it was cool, you know, and, and, and I think what happened is the tribute band kind of ate the uh, original band okay. because we got so well, of course. sucked into making you know, money. Well, that's what happened with me, right? Playing for people. I was doing covers. I recorded a couple of songs here and there. I recorded on some albums and then I, I wrote a couple of tunes. But I was gigging. I was gigging four or five times a week. Yeah. It's like, I'm getting paid here. Uh, yeah. Do I want to go on? Well, back then you had to go on tour to promote what you write. I was like, well, well that's, that's, that's that what that was happening with us, where yeah, happens, where we right? were we were having yeah. such a good time, we were getting well paid, we were, we're not we that had it's because of the these money, great but gigs. Still. But then we kind of found less no. and less time 
for our own sure. music. And it's not, the, like, it's uh, not the money, but if Friday night you're playing in front of over a thousand <coughs> people as a tribute band, and the people are going apeshit crazy because you're playing where the streets have no names, yeah. and they're jumping, and and you, it's all this and love, they're singing along to us, and, and you're getting paid. Yeah. But on the night before, we're playing originals, twelve people. Yeah. It kind of became like it's just, you kind of follow it yeah. the trail. It's demoralizing like you too. Said, you, know? you have two kids or yeah. one kid, whatever it is. Yeah. You have someone at home. You have a house, yeah. right? When you go, like, it's hard to explain to the other person and say, "Yeah, are you making money?" No, no. I'm, I'm just, just gonna know, wait. I'm gonna yeah. get the door. I'm gonna yeah. get twelve bucks. Yeah. But I'm gonna buy two drinks. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's gonna cost me twelve yeah. bucks, yeah. Yeah. right? Yeah. It's hard to yeah. when at I, a certain as age, you get older. As you get older, it's like okay, I'm gonna not drive my kid to soccer For or sure. whatever yeah because because you, you, you're doing soundtrack and, and so, again it's great if you can you know if you can do that and you want to do that then it's great yeah but but, but it's a it was it was a great time and, and we For sure we played a lot of really cool gigs so a lot of cool people and we did it for a long time and and the band had morphed and you know i'm not getting into the details because yeah. it doesn't really matter but we had a lot of different people come and go and different you know guitar players yeah. and and then you know all that but at the end of all that um you know, we just got old. You know, <laughs> we hit our forties. Life gets in the way. This guy, this guy had opened his own restaurant. Oh wow! I was, okay. I was in a new career. Where I was traveling a lot with the career I have now with Mario, where you know we're working at a guitar company. We're we're on the road a lot, so it just became a little more, a lot more difficult to to maintain being in a full time band. And at that same time, Em and I had come back together okay. to doing. Yeah, the, reg- the reg- what, I, what I do when you can. and stuff and cool. Yeah, and <laughs> yeah. It, and that became a lot of fun. So. So everything shifted. So again, in all that, we have our cover band, our tribute band, uh, our original band. I have my little restaurant, uh, uh, a wedding. He's playing my restaurant every Thursday. Playing his restaurant, which is really cool. I love it. So it was always 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 connected. Let's plug the restaurant. Well, uh, it's not open anymore. anymore. Oh, okay, okay, okay. So I'd rather not. Okay, let's not plug. (laughs) It was it was eight years of my past, and you know, it was good and bad at the same time. So hold on, because we're 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 flying along here. Yeah. Let's do speaking of new singers. The new singer is you right is, now. Is me right now, so yeah. So let's do yeah. another tune. Let's yeah. have Mario come back on, do this, yeah. the next tune, and then we'll yeah. finish off the podcast with a couple right. of little seconds. It sounds cool. All sounds right. cool? Sounds All great. Right. Let's do it. Let's go, Mario. Came here looking for love. I left you with my life. Came here wanting for more, and nothing felt so right. And sometimes, sometimes, love is all you got. Sometimes, I waited all my life. Is it the best you can do? Best you can do. What else can you do? When everything went wrong and you made it feel so right I gave you all my time and you made it feel worthwhile And sometimes, sometimes love is all you got But I can't 
came here looking for love. Guys, that was best you can do from the skirts. Thank you. Best you can do is this finishing a bottle of bourbon. Yeah. Best, <laughs> one night. That's the best you can best do. Best you can do, man. Best you can do. We now you know why I like doing this podcast. We cracked it open tonight. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, that sounds amazing. Yeah, but hold on. You, you know that I'm I'm out of my comfort zone. I don't usually play percussion. So I'm a bass player. I know we're talking hey, bass player. Everybody, he's like, a bass player. He's playing the cajon, cajon. singing yeah. beautiful harmonies. But you know what? It, I, Doing these acoustic um, uh, songs and, and well shows whatever yeah um, acoustic guitar and and, and bass eh, they, tough, they, tough, yeah, yeah it doesn't sound I've, I've heard acoustic basses too it just doesn't yeah it, it doesn't feel it's yeah. cool but it doesn't feel having amazing. some kind of percussion like the cajon yeah. kind of adds a little something and, and it, w- w- with Mario on guitar it was fantastic you guys it should was, do an acoustic thing with a cajon player I don't know I have one I'm just yeah. Throwing it out there. Forever. Hint, hint, hint. I yeah. mean, I wasn't in the outskirts, but I could be in the inskirts. In the <laughs> yeah, that's, that's You could be talking. the apostrophe. Well done. Well done. Well done. Well done. Guys, <laughs> you know what? We have segments on this show. I'm going to start with the first one. Okay, shoot. Okay? Worst gig ever. Oh. Because this, what I like about this is I laugh because it's amazing. I hear these stories. Like mm. Aldo Valami last week. The maid of honor broke a plate over the best man's head at a wedding. Oh my god! Because <laughs> because she slept uh, because uh, he slept with the bride, right? And, and, and she was, found out at, at the wedding. Found out, no, I think she waited for the wedding to oh, do it. Oh, that's yeah. terrible! Fucking that's terrible. terrible. So I love this worst gig ever part. Yeah. And also, it's part of like I'm sure this. You guys always play together. Yeah. There's a long history, so I would imagine you guys are going to reminisce about we, some we, certain. We've done a lot of gigs. Oh shit! Can be with the YouTube. Well, there, there's a lot that we can't we can't really say, oh, but 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 there are a few. Uh-huh. Um, so yours, you remember what you know what I'm gonna talk about? <laughs> you know what I'm gonna I say? I, I know, I know, I know. Ottawa. Yeah. yeah. Okay. We we had a gig in Ottawa as a U2 cover band. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So, this was so, a, so when you're in the U2, when you're in a tribute band, you know you get a lot of people come up to you because you're the edge. I was the edge. So. Yeah. What the hat? Yeah. I'm the edge. So you, a lot of people come up, and usually guitar players. What kind of pedals are you using? It, totally it, it was fun. I gotta admit, totally see it's doing. nothing like what I play today because now I'm more of an acoustic player. But back then, and, and I still do like you two and the edge particularly tremendously. But we had a lot of good good gigs. A lot of we had a lot of fun times as you two. And often you get a lot of people approaching the stage that appear to be drunk. Yeah. If they smell a booze well, and they're slurring their words. Yeah. You know they're gonna. And like, there's always eh. people coming out, wanting to come yeah. on stage, just yeah. saying, uh, the, and you I know, and you know, and, and a lot of times it's happened where where they they they're 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 trying to touch the guitar while he's yeah. playing, oh. yeah. and, it, and it affects the sound and well, affects well, the, no, it affects the show. my nerves because they, they, right. they, they come off. around, they, <laughs> right, right, right? They come so, around. So this one guy, one guy comes really close to the stage and he gets on the stage. <laughs> <laughs> this guy gets annoyed. He, he gets he gets annoyed really quickly. Of well, he gets annoyed. So he's, and, and he's, he's, I, he he threw him off the stage. He got <laughs> he got really pissed and he grabbed him and he threw yeah. him off. I have a bit of a temper. It doesn't show. Yeah, yeah. but dude, I seem I to be a pacifist. You. But no, but, but I if, if you if you come into my so everybody was like kind of oh, touch my body on? and touch my pedals. Yeah, touch yeah. my guitar. You are fucked. Yeah. So he oh. got in my space and I grabbed him like, dude, this is too much. I grabbed him. I th- and he <laughs> threw him off. Stage. And he was slurring and he was drunk and he smelled. Or uh, I thought he was drunk. He smelled the booze. He was him off the stage. End of the night, I went up to the guy. So you see how I took care of that guy. I took care of. And my singer said. Dude, he wasn't drunk. He ha- he was a uh, special he, needs. He was he was mentally challenged, and and he was just he wanted to come on stage. And he he wanted to have fun. He was, and to, we're like, oh my I'm god. I'm like, I just I just saw a guy not speak clearly, <laughs> smell the booze. 
got in my way and I fucking shoved him off. And I was on the other side of the stage. I'm like, yeah, I'm gonna win. Yeah, yeah, that's what you get. We we felt so bad. We felt so bad. Maybe that's not a great story to tell, actually. But, But, dude, I understand you. Like, it's not, it's obviously, if you knew, you wouldn't have done it. No, absolutely not. But, but, but it's, 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 you know what? Because it's a thing with musicians, people don't get it. For oh, some reason, they think you're, you're singers. Like your mic is personal. Yeah, of I don't want someone grabbing, yeah. putting their fucking yeah. lips on their yeah. mic. Having yeah, having conversations. You don't know who they are. You yeah, know where they've been. Come on, man. Yeah. And yeah. my instrument's my instrument. I, I, my bubble is my bubble. Totally. Yeah, right. Yeah, like, totally. So I, I totally get it. I. I don't know if I would have done the same thing. I might have had a heart. No, I'm joking. <laughs> yeah, I, was, I was a little. I'm joking. You know, aggra- instead of telling him, aggressive. you know, just you, can you get off the stage? You, you just you just you flipped out no, and no, grabbed it and threw it. It's because again, you guys are doing a YouTube tribute band. So there's people. They love it. There's a lot of people. It happens constantly. Yeah. So it's just that night. It's you know, it's the twentieth yeah. time it's happened to you. You're pissed. Like it's not my proudest <laughs> moment. I'll say that. <laughs> it's, not, it's, not, it's not. It's not a great. Is there marriage. another worst gig? <laughs> You might have. Which one? Where it was supposed to be my birthday? Your birthday. Yeah. Birthday. Well, my yeah. singer thought it would be fun to to announce to, to the crowd that it was my birthday. Okay. So, and it wasn't. <laughs> so everybody started bringing me shots and shots and shots and shots. See, and, see, you know, you see, can't, see, while Ray, you're on stage. Ray, Ray on stage is, is your classic bass player. Yeah. Doesn't need a I don't, lot of I don't want the Doesn't attention. I never wanted the Space. attention. I'm I'm in the background. I'm I'm you know I'm I look at my uh, my drummer. We play together. We're the rhythm section, and that's it. Don't give me the spotlight. I don't want the spotlight. I'm 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 good where I am. So he started saying it's his birthday, and so so you know everybody started buying me shots. And when you're on stage, and they give you shots, well you can't say no. I don't want you. I don't, you have to you know. Yeah, of course. It's it's disrespectful. Totally. So I started taking the shots and taking the shots, and and before you know it. I couldn't see. I couldn't stand straight. <laughs> couldn't play. I couldn't play. He, he I was playing. He certainly couldn't play. Totally wrong. So, wrong so key. last song of the night, with or without you. <laughs> totally wrong key. Bass and they're line. all looking at me. It's all bass, right? <laughs> right. Yeah. So whenever he's got to go to the G, he's going to Whatever. F. Whatever. And so I was the rest of us were looking at him, and he's like, "This is how he really plays. <laughs> this is how it. they really play. It. This is how he really plays it." <laughs> <laughs> this is how they really play it. <laughs> like, dude, everyone's geez. looking at me. Like, what are you doing? I'm playing it right. That was fucking at, hilarious. And at the end of the night, I couldn't, I couldn't yeah, stand. Yeah, I don't yeah. even know how I got home. Yeah, um, a, a, tra- a, tra- a trail of barf along the uh, b- yeah. along the highway. Whatever, on the long <laughs> going home, you know. Yeah. <laughs> and this was, we weren't even in town. We were. Uh, I actually South this Shore. Was last South Saturday. Shore. I was playing at a wedding, but they were party animals. Mm. Was, we were playing Summer of 69. So you know that part in the middle? Da, 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 da. I'm playing keyboards at that point. I'm right. doing that part. And the guy has a bottle of bourbon with a spout. He's pouring it. <laughs> he comes mouth. to me right in that part. And I'm drinking it. <laughs> and I didn't make a mistake. I was so proud of oh, myself. That was good. That was good. good. See, you're see good. I was the rookie. I, 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 I totally bossed the, but the song. Time, with Essential Pro. But an, another time, I, had, I was playing drums. And I had a wireless headset. Mm-hmm. And someone poured, gave me a grappa shot. Because I'm playing. And I choked on it. Oh, shit. Oh. But the mic was on. So I'm like, yeah. <laughs> everybody heard. The crowd. I'm fucking <laughs> coughing beyond coughing because oh, it went off. Yeah, yeah, it was rough. Okay, so. So, yeah, those are. Uh, that's amazing. I mean, there's many yeah, more. Maybe but, not the best stories. <laughs> those were the ones that just came. Yeah. Of course, I'm there. sure there's a million of there's them. There's tons. But now we have another segment. First Uh-oh. thought. First yeah. what? First I lo- thought. I love the okay. segment. So this right. is a segment I where I'm going to say something, which I totally did not prepare. Uh, but I'm going to say something and you're going to give me your first thought, whatever comes to mind. Very simple. Favorite food. Food? Yeah. I'll say it in. All of it. Uh, <laughs> That's me. Uh, Mexican. Really? All Mexican, yeah. Is that where you got the hat from? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I love Mexican food, man. It's Is that what we're calling it? A Mexican <laughs> hat? No, I got it. It's called a bolero <laughs> from Spain, but whatever. Move uh, on. Okay, favorite TV show? I'd have to say Seinfeld. Love it. I'm with you. Yeah. Breaking Bad. Yes. Oh. I'm with you on both of them. Oh. Okay. I, okay. I changed my. I you changed see? my answer. Heisman. Breaking Bad. Like, uh, did, did you like? Yeah. Did you see it now? Yeah. 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 It's great. Better Call Saul. Yeah. I loved it. I just finished watching I it. I didn't yeah. watch the last one. Yeah. Okay, no. I, I, won't, I won't spoil it, but everyone dies. No. I'm <laughs> kidding. No. It's really good. Though. <laughs> I'm it's not really going home. It's really good. Um. Okay. So now I'm gonna ask you a little bit more complicated. Best guitar player of all time. Oof. Me first? Oh, first. 
there's so many. And I work in a guitar company, so I'm a, around a lot of guitar players and styles. Personally, it's a bit of a, a, a black sheep here. Lindsey Buckingham from, the, from Fleetwood Mac. Wow. He's, he's a finger picker. He's completely uh, underrated. No one ever thinks of him as a guitar player because he's a songwriter, he's a singer. Okay. But this dude is a fucking wow. monster. Finger picker. Love it. Can play hard, can play soft. And uh, yeah, he's, he's got all the elements of a great guitar player. Lindsey Buckingham. Love it. That's, ori- yeah. that's an original. Yeah, that, that, that's that. my guy. That's my guy. Can you ask me best bass player? Sure. Best bass player. All time. John Entwistle. The Who. Oh, yeah. Nice. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. See, that's a new one. Yeah. Hey, guitar going. player. I mean, I'll listen to Eddie Van Halen and, and, and I trip. I yeah. mean, you're not. You're but, you know, then, then you, you know, because yeah. he's, you know, he's a guitar player. Yeah. So he, he pays attention to. But I, I grew up admiring Paul McCartney and John Entwistle and John Mon, um, uh, John, Paul Jones. John Paul Jones. John Paul Jones, yeah. Uh, but John Entwistle probably would be Sweet. my pick. Okay. That's, a, that's a good pick. That's a good yeah. pick. That's yeah. a very good pick. That. Right. So let's say your favorite live, your best live show. That, that I've seen? seen? Yeah, sure. Tom Petty. Good. I saw him two months before he died. Oh. And, and I'm a lifelong Tom Petty fan. Okay. Like I mentioned before, Dylan Springsteen, that, that, wow. that, that, whole, that whole thing from 70s. Uh, 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 I always wanted to see him live. He was playing in Ottawa. It was a Sunday show. Wasn't sure I was going to make it. My girlfriend convinced me. Did you love him? Just go. Yeah, I'm like, yeah, yeah but it's Sunday. Yeah. Yeah, but, but she's cooler than I am. So she, she, so she made me do it. And, uh, and I saw him and we loved it. And, she, and, and I'm, like, I'm like, a, like a nice Canadian guy. I'm like, no, we're good at the back. We're good. She's like, no, you love him. Push to the front. Like, be that guy. Be that guy. Yeah. So we got it. We got up like, like maybe 20 feet from the front. Sweet. I have still on my phone tons of pictures. And I like just goosebumps because I'm a huge fan and, and, and you know, this great nothing show. Nothing beats that. Nothing, two, nothing beats a good cause. Some of you love. Especially and then two months later, he dies. Oh, man. So I'm like, man, I saw him like at the end of his career. Wow. So for me, like that's undisputably Tom Petty. Yours? Yeah. You know what? I'm, I'm, not, a, I'm not a concert goer. Um, but I'd have to say, even though they're probably not my favorite bands or not even my top five favorite bands, uh-huh. I remember one time many years ago, um, I was at Larone and with my wife, and we were walking back to the car. It was late at night, and I kept uh-huh. hearing, I, I, I heard music. I, I heard a live band, uh-huh. and they have that, I don't know, that little auditorium. I don't oh, know. Oh yeah, yeah, they whatever. Have like a little hut kind of thing. <coughs> yeah. Yeah. And um, so we went in. We were we, we walked towards it. And we we went in, and Tea Party was playing. Oh, nice. And and. So we just walked in. There was nobody at the door. Whatever. We walked in. The place was kind of full. Whatever. And and the way the, the way it's made, it's kind of underground. So you, when you walk in, you got to go down, and then you know it's kind of a round stage. Whatever. It was kind of weird. And we stayed there, and they were amazing. The wow. sound. And it, like I said, I'm not a huge fan. Yep. I mean, we opened up for that many years ago. And so, you know, Tea Party was kind of, you know. They didn't treat us very well. But uh, sorry. I whatever. Just, whatever. They were, they, they, want, they were wannabe stars back then. They were, just, okay. they, they were starting off when we were opened up for them. They, they but it was just Tea amazing. It, to this day, I, I just remember just I was like I was in awe. Great. They, they were great, band, great yeah. musicians. The yeah. sound was amazing, and it was very personal because it's not a big place. So yeah. we were just like we were looking down at them, and they were just you know they was they just blew yeah. me away. I love those. Yeah. Those, are, those are nights that are phenomenal. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It wasn't too. a huge stage. It wasn't a huge performance. A huge uh, you know the 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 whole stage show wasn't was nothing. Yeah. It was just them. But still, and I the I loved it. Yeah, amazing. Okay, I'm gonna ask you, um, what's the first thing that comes to your mind when I say rap music? Run DMC. Nice. Yeah. yeah. It could be like a... Yeah, I, I, I'm not into rap. That's why, but, that's why I'm But back then, that. back then, back in what? Well, because they did mid-80s. Aerosmith, right? Well, well, yeah, that's what introduced <laughs> me to, to, <laughs> to rap. But, what the hell is but this? But to me, For a lot Run of DMC us, yeah. is still... Sure. still you, is rap. there a... Poetry. Poetry. Really nice. I, I'm, I'm a big reader. I, I, I like literature. I read a lot of books, and I think... Uh, I think rappers today are, are just an extension of what, what poets are doing. You consider it music? I mean, yeah, obviously it yeah, is music, but... Yeah, I, I've had this debate, like, and from rap and hip-hop, I'll, I'll, I'll take that into, like, DJs. Like, like a lot of people are like, oh, DJs aren't artists. Yeah, they are. Yeah. Because I think, like... It's like, just a different... I find it's just a different right. type so, of artist. So, so, of course. So I'm, I'm not hard on rap, rap music because I think it's... It's a phenomenal art, but again, it's it's word based, it's literature based, and it and and it's language of today of street music. So, uh, 
Yeah, no, I think it's just poetry. I think it's brilliant poetry, too. I'm going to stump you on this one. <laughs> Favorite lyric of any song? This was Elisa. She came up with this once, and it's it's a mind. Yeah. What are you doing? That's, that's, a, that's a tough one, right? Well, what am I supposed like, to say? Think of a lyric of a song that just gets Man, you. there's so much. That, that, that's right. There is so much. And then now that you have to think about it, you don't yeah. have to think about it. You know what? You see, I love this. Okay. this is there's love. one that kind of always gets to me. Yeah. And it because the song came out when... Uh, my kids were really small, uh-huh. and uh, it's a Bono lyric where he says, um, um, uh, I can't remember, but it's the scent of a baby's head. What is it? Come on, you know. It's, it's definitely. It's, something, it, it's yeah. a limerick. Okay. And it's whatever, like like the scent of a baby's yeah. head. Yeah. Like the, like the what smell. is it? <laughs> By the wiggles. <laughs> no. Yeah. Okay. Because I remember, you know, you know as a newborn, you, you take, you take your, your little boy or your I'll, little girl I'll, I'll be in and you bed smell and the, I'll their head just smells there is, amazing. Yeah, there is, yeah. Yeah. We, we all know that scent. Of, of a brand new baby. Yeah. Yeah. yeah we That's all know that. That's pretty it. awesome. Yeah. And that always, that always got yeah. me. So. Yeah. Yours? You're still There's a lot. I listen to, look, I'm, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a fan of classic songwriters through and through, like freaking Dylan and all that. Um. So I can, I, there's a lot that's in my head, but when you said it, I, I'm going to go with what came to my head first. And uh, there's a Bruce Springsteen lyric in the song Thunder Road from his Born to Run album where he says, Roy Orbison singing for the lonely. It's me and I want you only. Oh. And it's just that that line Very is nice. it's poetic and nice. And, you see? And, he, and, and he references Roy Orbison, which is Amazing. one of the, yeah. So. Okay, I got there, there two quick go. ones now. There you go. Um, there's two things I want to do. The first thing, best band of all time, real quick. Beatles. Nice. There's too many, but Beatles has to yeah. be number one. You know what? I'll say Beatles too Sweet. because how can you not? It's hard. Yeah. To, it's hard not to say yeah. Beatles. It's, it's hard. Beatles. Followed by the Eagles. Who knows? Oh. Gotta say the Eagles. Yeah. So they, they put country rock on the map. So yeah. I was always a Queen guy. I love, Queen. I love Queen. I love Queen. I love Queen, but I don't love them as much as I like Twang. You know. You so. know what? I think Shom ruined Queen for me. <laughs> I don't. I don't know if I should say that. That's because you heard Bohemian Rhapsody. Oh five God! But times. Yeah. Yeah. I, See, just like, I, I can't listen to the Queen anymore. Like, I just yeah. love that yeah. song, right? But anyway. Okay. Cool. Now this is a quick one, because I think we are running out of time. But this is a quick one. Put together your all-time band. <laughs> Dude, that, what are you doing really, to me? Man? Right. That's really good. Pick, that's pick really a good. band that you got to <laughs> put together and say this is the best all-time band. Can I go? Go ahead. So, so we're gonna have uh, we're gonna have uh, uh, Roger Daltrey from the Who singing. Love it already. We're gonna have Flea on bass. That was my pick. We're gonna have Stuart Copeland on drums. I'm so we're that have, yeah. I already mentioned Lindsey Buckingham, so we're gonna go a bit different. Yeah. We're gonna go. Uh, we're gonna go. Uh, uh, Eddie fits that. There's too what many. Eddie fits that. I'm, I'm not a metal guy. I'm not a rock guy. Okay. Uh, I'm gonna go. Uh, I'm gonna go. Uh, uh, Nuno Bettencourt. He's my guy. Okay, yeah, here, an here, here we go. Guy. We're going to yeah. go Steve Ray Vaughan on guitar. Oh, yeah. Because he's go wrong. just got it. Can't yeah. go wrong. And the songs are being written by John Lennon and McCartney. Beautiful. How's that? Bad. How's that? Is bad. that a band? That's a band. That's yeah. a fucking band. You're up. He's stuck. Come on, he's man. Like, he's like, man, who the fuck's this guy asking me these questions? Whatever band. I say is going <laughs> to... Well, as on bass has to be John Entwistle. Yeah. Um, That's your dude. Drums, I'd say Tommy Lee. Oh, nice. I love Tommy Lee. I love the way he plays. Yeah. I love the, the, his whole allure. <laughs> yeah. when he, come on, shut up. Tommy Lee, yeah. yeah. Okay. Guitar, there's so, so many. There is, yeah. There's so many. Because we kind of listen to... Some, sometimes they pick two guitar players. So they pick a rhythm and a... Yeah, see, we, we listen Hendrix to different lead. types of music. So, so I would say Eddie Van Halen. Okay. Because I like that, you know, yeah. that shredder. Sure. You the know, finger tapping, uh, the finger tap, it it just it, it, it catches my attention. I like yeah. I, like I'm you know, uh, as far as singer, I'd say M. The nice. Yeah, that's a yeah, that's a bad. That's, that's a bad. Band. That's all we need. Right? Yeah. No that's rhythm guitar band. at all. That Eddie can do it. We got a we yeah, got yeah. a singer. Yeah, we have a drummer, drummer there. We had a drummer. Yeah, yeah Tommy, Tommy Lee. Tommy Lee. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. yeah. Hold on, Tommy Lee, M. Vidmar. <laughs> John Entwistle. John Entwistle. <laughs> Eddie Van Halen. <laughs> 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 two, two dead guys. 
A guy with a big penis? An M. And uh, I'll, I'll, go, I'll pay to watch that back. Can you imagine what, what it would sound like? I, it sounds good. I Come on. See it. It's not like the Oscars. Oh. <laughs> I see him singing Danza you see, he was, all, he was all serious and stuff. And... <laughs> Danza Kuduro. Or Simply Red or something. Uh. <laughs> no, what's the other? That's I a, love the sign. Yo, that's a great me. record. Who's the, who's the one with the big penis? Tommy Lee. <laughs> oh, okay. That's do, right. do, do, you, do you not have an Instagram account? Yeah, okay. Yeah. Come on, <laughs> oh, yeah, I forgot about that. Oh, my God, guys. That was fucking funny, man. <laughs> Yeah. Okay, where can we find you guys? <laughs> St. Leonard. St. Leonard. No. Laval. At the bar. Laval. <laughs> no, the honestly, SAQ, obviously. I, I, honestly, uh, <laughs> right now, it's, it's sad to say we only have the one single. We only had time. So what's the YouTube channel? So the YouTube channel, channel is the Skirts. <laughs> Skirts Music. Skirts Music. Skirts Music. The Instagram okay. channel, uh, the Instagram uh, uh, account is Skirts Music as well. Yeah, we it's have a all Facebook music, and whatever. You know, Spotify and, and, and Apple and all the rest, they have our one song. It's just one song. Does it matter yet? But there's a lot more. Like, like, like I have literally on my phone hundreds of songs. Like, Amazing. I'm not even... So you're going to be releasing... Yeah, 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 we're, just, yeah. we're just trying to f- coordinate the logistics of, of getting a... a, a a musician that lives in another country <laughs> here so we can get him. So, you know, like we don't, Might like, like we, we thought of using drum machines and using other drummers, but it just didn't seem right. Yeah. So we're going to do it. We're going to do it our way. We waited this long. Yeah. We waited 30 years. What's could, two more? What's the work? What's the, what's the other 30 months? <laughs> so we're going to, we're going to just Maybe by work then, out the logistics. He'll sing a song with Tommy <laughs> Lee. Who knows? It's going to be a hit. I'm telling <laughs> you. <laughs> And Eros cover. Eros writing the songs. <laughs> oh, I love it. So YouTube, um, guys, follow the Skirts music yeah. on YouTube. There's a lot more to come. There's a there lot more to be. come. The there one song be. is great. The video is great. So, um, so, so I'm going to say one last shot. Yeah. In the, mean, in the meanwhile, while we're working on our country rock or our Americana type stuff, we're also working on a country, a pure country record. Sweet. I'm looking for a pedal steel player. I'm looking for a mandolin player. I need like we're, we're we a have, banjo player. We have a whole bunch of songs that are just outside the the width of what the of what the skirts are doing. Okay. They're just pure country, and it's something we're gonna we're gonna plan like a live recording. We're gonna bang out eight to ten songs. Okay. I've got the songs written already. Wow. It's gonna be a pure country, country western bluegrass, bluegrass, bluegrass type thing. Love it. rockabilly yeah. type I know, record. I know some guys Okay, we'll talk about that. Yeah, but we have a lot of things. Bands. We're doing all the stuff that we always want to do. Sure. We just never got around to. Great. That's we'll just get it done. That's what music's all done. about. Yeah. Get it done. Have fun yeah. with it, man. Yeah. 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 Hey, there's a, a guy that we had on the show. His name is John Serino. Oh, I know John. You know John. He's wonderful. He I love put John. together an album where he played every instrument yeah. other than the drums. Yeah, John's Just because he wanted to. Yeah. Just, he played yeah, guitar, John. keyboards, yeah. bass. great. He sang. Just as a side project. Yeah. It's great. That's what music's about, man. You know? Do it. Do it. You do it your way. You do what you want. Yeah. Like we don't want. We're not trying to, like, look. We're not trying to get signed. We're not trying to fit right. into any kind of. You want to write what you like and what you would listen. To. I, I'm, I'm, like I'm, a, yeah. I'm, a, I'm a down home. I'm a country fan. Like I listen to a lot of different kinds of music, but I really like country music. And I said to Ray, as much as what we're doing is very rock influenced, I want to write a pure country record. Sure. Laval Italian guys playing country. That's nice. what it's going to be. That's what it's going to be. And we're going to do it. We're going to get There's it done. There's a girl uh, based in Montreal. Well, she comes from out west, but. She's in Montreal now. Her name is Brittany Kennel. Okay, okay. She might come on the show. I'm trying. I'm trying to okay. get her on the show. Right, but cool. she's cool. Going, really, she just opened for Shania. Amazing. It's a nice. Quebec country act. She's oh really, really, really good. Wow. Uh, I did a gig with her, and I saw her perform there, and she played her song, and wow, like it's it's country. It's real country, but yeah. it sounds really good. Anyway, yeah. whatever. It's it's coming big in Quebec. It's, I, it's I, there. I, I, we I, never had it here. It's all over the world. It's huge. There, there, there now was, in Quebec, it's coming. There was something a few weeks ago to, uh, uh, to, in early September called the Lasso Festival, which was a Quebec country festival. She was it, there, yeah. It had hardly any marketing. I, as a huge fan of the, of the genre, uh-huh. I only found out about it the weekend of. And I'm really disappointed because I think it's a wonderful um, type of music yeah. and needs to get its props. My friend, uh, uh, my friend plays in the band, well, I know the band, uh, Deluxe Radio. Oh, really yeah. good, uh, really yeah, good country that. band. They yeah. sound really, really good. Yeah, see? So, more of that, cool. man, more of that. Guys, that. I honestly want to thank you for coming on the show. Thank this you. was a blast. It was. And thank you so much for thank you, Mil, for being the guy. Lisa, thank you so much Lisa. for manning the... Thank you, Lisa. Uh, no problem. Amazing. Thank you. She's uh, <laughs> no the problem. technician tonight. Um, guys, once again, the skirts, check them out on YouTube. Amazing stuff. You heard them play. It's phenomenal. Thank you so much uh, to our sponsors. 
and thank you all for watching subscribe to let's talk it out subscribe to sessions with steph we come out every wednesday with some sort of episode and uh, guys have a good night thank you very much i'm gonna have a swig of this beer just to make sure the night finishes off right and that's it guys thanks have a good night Bye. 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 Bye.